upon the King. Let us our lives, our souls, our debts, our careful wives, our children and our sins lay on the King. We must bear all. Oh, hard condition. Twin born with greatness, subject to the breath of every fool, who sense no more can feel but his own ringing. What infinite heart's ease must kings neglect that private men enjoy? And what have kings that privates have not too? Save ceremony. Save general ceremony. What art thou, thou idle ceremony? What kind of god art thou that suffers more of mortal griefs than do thy worshippers? What drinks thou oft instead of homage sweet but poison flattery? Oh, be sick, great greatness, and bid thy ceremony give thee cure. Thinks thou the fiery fever will go out with titles blown from adulation? Will it give place to flexure and low bending? Canst thou, when thou commands the beggar's knee, command the health of it? No, thou proud dream, placed so subtly where the king's repose. I am a king that find thee, and I know. It is not the balm, the scepter, and the ball. The sword, the mace, the crown imperial, the intertissued robe of gold and pearl, the facet title running for the king, the throne he sits on, or the tide of pomp that breaks upon the high shore of this world. No, not all these thrice gorgeous ceremony, not all these laid in bed majestical, can sleep so soundly as the wretched slave who with a body filled and vacant mind gets him to rest, crammed with distressful bread, never sees horrid night, the child of hell, but like a lackey from the rise to set, sweats in the eye of Phoebus and all night sleeps in Elysium. Next day after dawn doth rise and help Hyperion to his horse, and follows so the ever-running year with profitable labour to his grave. And but for ceremony, such a wretch, winding up days with toil and nights with sleep, had the forehand and vantage of a king. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. 